Hi, this is the face of a crazy person. <laughs> so I recently built my computer and I want to kind of give a bit of a tour over the thing, showing it off and kind of explaining what exactly I did because it's taken me sort of a month. I'll try to be quick and direct about giving specs so that those who are only here for that can move on before I then go into explaining more of everything that I did and wanted to do. So what I have is a, I know you can't really see it, the inside anyway. I have a 13900K in here with an RTX 4060 Ti. The motherboard is the Prime Z790A Wi-Fi, 64 gigabytes of Corsair DDR5 RAM at 6400 megahertz. Corsair HX1500 for the power supply. That thing is originally like six or $700, but it was literally on sale for 250 when I saw it and I'm like, yeah, no way I'm passing that offer up because anything else that was comparable price or even more expensive was not even as high as this one is. And I believe this is also a platinum power supply, so that makes it better, I guess. <laughs> Case is 7000D Airflow. The cooler is an Octua cooler. I forget what exactly the cooler is. And then most fans in here are also uh, Noctua as well. Those fans over there on the side are more recent, or on the back, I should say, side panel, whatever. Noctua Redux fans, the others, um, over here on the front are the Noctua, but they're 120 uh, millimeter Noctua fans, uh, PWM. I, I, every fan in here is PWM. I also put a bunch of teeny tiny fans up there. <laughs> I should probably snip all those little rubber bits off of there, uh, but I put them there because I really wanted to. The fans were pretty cheap and I thought this was super cute and just because of how tiny they are. <laughs> so that's just something completely unnecessary, but I did it anyway. And then uh, the three fans on top are the Corsair fans that came with the case. Three Arctic cool fans as well. There's one here, there's one at the bottom on the front, and there's one at the bottom on the, on the um, back slash side as well. Now, as you can see, there's not just a graphics card and a PCI slot there, no. Uh, part of what I really wanted to do with this thing is fill it up. Right, like I, I want to use everything that's that's on this thing because I figured like if I'm gonna spend the money on on all this crap and build this thing, like the in 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 my eyes and what I wanted, there was no reason for me not to just use every part of it, and I didn't have enough USB ports anyway. Yes, ignore the rat's nest. My cable management is obviously superior. Anyone who thinks otherwise can suck an egg. And I really wanted well for, for the laptop. Right, I got I got laptop earlier near, and that thing has a Thunderbolt port built in, and so I did get this Thunderbolt dock for that to help uh, run all the things. And this computer and the motherboard does not have it. And what I would do, and what I would recommend for anyone to do, is if you're looking, if you want to have a Thunderbolt port in your PC. Please, 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 before I get into the details of why, please just look at getting a motherboard that has a built-in Thunderbolt port on it instead of looking at one that has a Thunderbolt header, okay? Make sure on the side, the I.O. panel already has a Thunderbolt port on it, okay? Otherwise, you're going to be spending 100 to $150 on a, a, a PCI card which for me is uh, that bottom one right here, to give it Thunderbolt ports. And it is very frustrating. Before I explain why that's frustrating and the story about that, I also have a Avermedia, Avermedia, whatever, capture card thing in there as well. I believe this is the Game Gamer, Gamer Capture 2 or something like that. And then I got this uh, PCI card with um, two more uh, USB-C ports and five more USB 3.0 ports uh, from Amazon. And then there is one more card in there um, just underneath the graphics card. It's it's between the graphics card and the capture card. I don't know how well that can be seen. You can see the cord going to it, I guess. So there's that. There we go. And the reason for that is because this case comes with uh, four USB 3.0 ports on top and a USB-C. The motherboard, however, and the, this is where, so I, 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 I learned a lot while building this and uh, I, I learned a lot that uh, I probably should have learned before, but I also didn't know about certain things. 
So I didn't know, like, I thought that those would just connect to the motherboard and that's just how that would go, right? I, I didn't know that I needed certain specific headers um, or a certain amount of them or whatever it was. So this motherboard only has two USB 3.0 headers on it, or sorry, only has one USB 3.0 header and there are two cords, right? There, uh, because these first two and then the second two um, are each their own cords. So only one of them was able to be plugged into the motherboard and that left two of the USB ports on top completely useless. So I really didn't want that. So I did get this thing from Vantech. It was a super speed USB four port thingamajig. So that came with two more USB ports at the back right here, that card right there. And then the header for the other two up there. I had some issues with that, but it was all driver related. Uh, with Windows 11, you're just not, Windows 10, 11, you're just not supposed to install the drivers uh, and just let Windows handle that automatically. So uh, that was pretty easy to fix. This thing I had no issues with. I plugged in, plugged it in and it worked and that's it. No, all, uh, nothing else. The capture card I haven't really tested. When I first tested it, it wasn't working. Um, but when I looked in the um, device manager, it did show that there were issues. I all, all I did was scan for hardware changes and that seemed to have fixed it. So because now the device actually shows up in, in OBS and has a, a thing on there that just says, oh, it's ready for capture or whatever it was. So I'm assuming it works now. And the, this PCI card, as you can see, it's like on a riser and that's the riser cable. And that's because that one is actually underneath the graphics card and covered by it. So um, I, when I found out that, that there's one under the graphics card, I'm like, oh, I can get one more little PCI card and shove it in here. Why not? And this thing was only like 20 bucks or 30 bucks or something like that. So I'm like, you know what? I need more USB ports anyway, so I don't care. <laughs> Let's get that thing and shove it in there. And this thing was like also 30, 20 or 30. Now I'll probably show footage of me building it while I talk over these things as well and, and explain uh, some of the stuff, but putting it together and everything because I putting in the fans, I, I screwed up many multiple times every with every friggin' fan panel that I put in here where I had to like redo them and redo them again and then again because, <laughs> because I just kept fucking it up. Yeah, real ridiculous of me, isn't it? Great job, huh? It took me a very, very long time to actually build the thing. Oh, I, I guess before I get into the building part of it, let me explain the Thunderbolt thing of a jig. So if, if I had just spent more money on a slightly higher end motherboard, I would have had some extra features on there and extra ports and whatnot on there as well. It also only has four uh, SATA ports for hard drives, which is kind of annoying because I have a lot of drives. Um, it does have spot for four M.2, but if I would have spent more, I would have also had a Thunderbolt port on it and wouldn't have had to pay the extra 150 for the uh, Asus specifically because it's an Asus motherboard. I had to buy the Asus card for Thunderbolt for 150 bucks extra. So I originally got the MSI one because the MSI one was 99 bucks and that thing gave me two well, it gave, they both give two Thunderbolt ports, but then this one gives two uh, mini display ports and the other just gives two uh, display ports. And so I'm like, well, I mean, I don't really use mini display for much crap anyway, and they both give the same crap, so why not just get the cheaper one? No, you can't do that because it's an Asus motherboard, so you have to get the Asus proprietary thingamashit. You can't put the, the, the MSI one on here. There's probably some sort of adapter that you could get as well, but like at, at some point, you're just gonna end up paying the same amount anyway in the end. So it was really, really ridiculous, really, really dumb. I had to return the MSI card because I didn't know that I couldn't put that one in here. It just says it's a Thunderbolt card, and then it gives, you know, like, whatever freaking uh, it i know rj45 or whatever is a uh, ethernet port but like it, it random letters and numbers or whatever right like tb142 or some crap on this one header and the other says jdb usb i don't fucking know whatever i don't care i had no clue that they couldn't be used together so anyway solve that put it in there i'm just kind of annoyed and pissed off other people apparently have had issues with it i have not um actually uh one issue i have is that that thing the extra thunderbolt ports on it do nothing nothing i plug into it is detected they charge things and power definitely goes through them but nothing nothing happens. So if I plug a USB device in, into it, or if I plug a USB hub into it, and then plug something into that, 
whatever device I plug into it is not detected at all, just period. So I don't know what the hell's going on. Maybe this card, I know that there's something about the ports. One of them can support 20 gigabytes per second, whatever data transfer. The other's only 10 or some crap, whatever, I don't care. Anyway, um, as you can see though, the shroud is off of the damn thing. Why? Well, because this is on Asus's own card, by the way. I don't know if you'll really be able to see it in the in the mess of freaking wires I have in here. The Thunderbolt header is like right right there in, in the in the middle of the screen, so somewhere around there. And with this freaking shroud on, on Asus Thingamajig and Asus own motherboard, the Thunderbolt header is covered by the Thunderbolt card, which this thing is supposedly supposed to, it, it must go into the X16 slot or something. I don't know. Probably doesn't have to, but that's what the instructions or whatever said. Or maybe that was just the MSI one, so I assumed it transfers to this one. Anyway, so that's, that's all that stuff, I guess. Now for monitors. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, and then six. This whole thing here is a monitor as well, display. So I've, I've wanted to have six displays on a computer for so long, just like for absolutely no reason. I mean, ultimately what, what I've always dreamt of is, is having like six of the largest like curved screen monitors, not widescreen, but just six, six of the largest resolution, whatever that I can find with three on the bottom and three on top, right? Just so that it's like an actual battle station. <laughs> of displays that that's something I, I've always wanted. Obviously I didn't do that. That would have cost way too much money to do this. Um, it's still the dream to look forward to, but uh, that, that's, that's an old monitor. That was my old um, main display. This is my new display. It's a 2k display. Then there's two touchscreen thingamajigs over there. And this one is also a touchscreen and it's five inches and also 2k. That is a 2k display. No joke. Like I, when I saw that thing, and for the price it was, it was only a hundred bucks Canadian. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I have to have that. And then I saw on YouTube, I was seeing all, all these things about the Snowblind case mod and and this friggin' thing, and I thought that is so fucking cool. I'm doing that. And I had this this ridiculous old ass Samsung monitor, S24H. 360L or some crap like that. I don't freaking know, whatever. D360H, D360L, something like that. I, I had that thing lying around. It doesn't have a visa mount on it and the sand takes up a large, large footprint. So I like pretty much never really wanted to use it again unless I absolutely had to, but I also wasn't gonna get rid of it because that's just a waste. Like, well, I wasn't gonna garbage it anyway. Could have given it to someone, but I decided I would take that apart and try it. And this way, if it gets damaged, well, I don't really care. Now that thing, putting it together, all the tutorials on YouTube uh, for doing that mod were completely unhelpful because with this freaking thing, uh, Samsung, I don't know if it's just Samsung or, or what, but seems to be a Samsung thing. They are slightly friggin' ridiculous. Now you get to see inside the computer. <gasps> hey, you fuck. Excuse me, my bad. Let's not yank on things. All right. Typically that's not such a great idea to do. <laughs> okay. Um, I know a mess of wires in here as well. Um, so this, this core is attached to the thing, that thing, this is what I'm talking about. This is why it was a giant fucking mess because you, uh, uh, all the other monitor tutorials for doing the Snowblind PC case mod, LCD transparent side panel thing of a jig <laughs> is you, uh, you, you just need to like uh, remove some particular connector on there, power connector, whatever, and then solder on another connector. And then it's just supposed to be like SATA to that, I think. Um, but that clearly does not fucking work with this thing because the power cord is a frickin' DC jack. And with Samsung, it's even more ridiculous because it's a frickin' like uh, 14 or 15, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's a weird number that's not really like standard with, with anything else for the amount of volts. So what I actually had to do, and, and it took me a long time of like researching and, and, and searching this up, and then of course like waiting for all the parts to come uh, for it as well. So basically, I had to get one adapter uh, so this this part from from here down is an adapter um, for so so what what I looked for was a Molex to DC um, adapter and that's what I got but that DC plug was not large enough to plug into this board for the monitor so I had to get a adapter for that size 
And then of course I had to get a adapter and these are all my friggin' adapter adapters because it came in groups. I had to get an adapter for the uh, Molex to SATA and then plug the SATA into the SATA thing on there. And that's how it gets power. So very cool, very cool. Yes, yes, yes. Now I also have a two USB ports in there right there and one of those powers the lights of which that is and that uses a remote control um for the lights uh, the pretty pretty lights yes that led light strip um because i couldn't freaking find any uh ad addressable Gen 2 LED lights uh, that would work in this thing that would be what I need them to be. All I wanted was something white. I didn't want like RGB. I mean, RGB would be fine, but if I had a remote control, that would be better. But I didn't want to have to download some other uh, third party app to control it. The Asus Armory Crate, for some reason, is not working with my computer. Uh, it does not install, and I don't know why. <laughs> So I can't even control the RGB lights on that on that thing or anything else with this motherboard or anything. <laughs> Firmware, nothing. I, I, I couldn't friggin' find anything. I did find something that would have been magnetic and connect to that. It, it was one of those things that had like a, a silicone cover o over the LED lights and it was fucking disgusting. Absolutely. It was slimy. It was actually slimy. I'm not even joking, not exaggerating. It was slimy. I even wiped it down with a paper towel cleaned it and everything and it was still fucking slimy it was one of those kinds of silicone shits it was dih fucking disgusting so there was no way i wasn't going to put that in my fucking computer no way no how this thing i got acrylic to put the backing on here so i i made the well i cut out this acrylic or ch shattered out this acrylic <laughs> piece and drilled the holes and and uh, put them in there and everything. I had to get all these freaking short ass um, HDMI cables and everything. And then that's the HDMI cable for for this thing. Sorry, Display Port HDMI to Display Port. Um, so those are plugged into the CPU, and then the other four monitors are plugged into the GPU. And my mess of freaking USB devices and crap. Corsair K100 keyboard, Razer Tartarus. Logitech G502X wired, obviously. Loop deck over there. Webcam. Oh, that's another thing as well. I thought it would be kind of fun. I got these cheap little USB camera things and I put one in here. So now I have case cam, <laughs> which I just thought was fun. That that was also supposed to have a, an infrared um, feature with it, but that wasn't working. And I don't know why they gave me, a, I asked them and they gave, they didn't get an answer from the manufacturer or whatever. And they just offered me a 15% discount. So I'm like, yeah, sure. Whatever. This one, however, I got, and it does actually have an infrared function just natively, no drivers needed or anything. So very cool. Very cool. I got on the previous, oh, there's another camera up there as well. A, a, a long, long time ago, because I really like this game called Beyond Good and Evil, it's my favorite game video game ever, um, I really wanted like a, a tiny little digital camera, kind of like what Jade has in the game. Um, so I got this. I saw this at some liquidation store, it was super cheap, and it was super cute, it's just a cheap little piece of plastic. Uh, and it had some memory on it, so you could take a few pictures and then save them there, and then um, put them on your computer and everything if you wanted and whatever. And it still works. It still turns on. There's no battery in it, but if you plug it in via USB, it does turn on. Um, however, this is, is obviously no longer Windows XP or Windows 7, so it doesn't really connect to this thing anymore. Um, it connects and it sees it, but it's got issues and it doesn't see it, whatever. Um, on the old computer, on the Windows 7, I was able to use this and actually use it like it's a freaking webcam in OBS. So I thought it would be super cool to have this um, be the inside case cam just because the the effect that it has like it's it's not a perfectly clear picture it was kind of a, a shitty like grainy ass picture and i just thought that that effect would be kind of neat to have inside the computer as case cam um but i tried everything uh with drivers and whatever i could and it's the computer just ain't having it like it's clearly detected and it shows that the drivers are there, but there's no driver that exists for the device. Well, it shows the device is there, but no driver for the device or whatever, something along those lines. Nothing I tried worked, so it's kind of a lost cause. And yeah, it's it's just sad, unless I can figure something out. 
If I do like virtual machine stuff, maybe that'll work. Remote control for the lights. Bam. There we go. We turn it off, obviously, if the screen kind of turns off. It's still there, you can still see it. Um, but like this. Just so fucking cool. I just love this. Freaking love that. That's so damn awesome. So glad I did that. Such a cool ass case mod. And I'm so happy that it worked. Even though, like I said, it's like super shitty. <laughs> well, I guess I should mention I also have a UPS down here, obviously, for the computer and everything, just because, you know, you should always have a UPS battery backup for your expensive ass devices like this and important devices. So, yeah, definitely a, a good idea to, to have. Building the computer, like initially putting the whole thing together, all, all the all the parts, CPU, GPU, all that crap, motherboards inside the thing and everything, that took me a very long time to do. <laughs> I did have to take a break in between. I originally tried to stream it and like 45 minutes in, I'm like, I haven't even really fucking done anything. Uh, I'm still working on the fucking fans or whatever. And it was just taking me way too long. And I'm like, well, I... I realized it was going to take me way too long, so I just decided not to. I ended up ha having to take a break partway through as well, just because it was extremely tiring, and I don't really have a proper table or desk around here to, like, put the thing on and actually build in. Uh, the desk at the time was a mess, and so I would have to, like, clear everything off of there and then put it where, exactly. So I built it probably in a very shitty way. <laughs> Um, definitely not a, a way that uh, anyone would recommend at all. I know. Shut up. I don't need to hear it. <laughs> it. It also took me a very long time because I was trying to be extremely careful. It's my first time building a PC and I didn't want to fuck anything up. So yeah, it took me, it took me a very long time, but it was really fun. I also really, really, really enjoyed it. The thermal paste, or actually not, not paste at all that I used in the thing, also I forgot to mention this in the beginning, was the uh, thermal grizzly cryo pad. I think, I think it was cryonaut or car carbonaut. I think I got carbonaut. I thought that those were really cool. And so I decided to get that and try that instead of traditional, like actual thermal paste. And it seems to work actually really well. Like ther thermals do seem pretty decent. It is 36 there at idle. And I the, the max that I have is like 72 and it doesn't even hold at 72. Uh, the, I, I, the max I've seen it hold at is like um, 70. So yeah, very, very cool. Very exciting. Oh, I forgot to mention with the with the PC LCD uh, case panel thing of a jig, um, it, it was also frustrating because when, when I first uh, plugged it in and everything it it didn't turn on and I was like oh no it's not working like what what's the problem it comes with with a with a daughter board right the the monitor it, it, it has a daughter board and it has this like it, it had this little, like little um freaking touch screen sort of well t touch sort of area on the right side which you would touch for power yeah you, you would touch for power either side that's side, whatever and then uh, you would also touch for the menu and everything so um that's also in here because uh, without that thing, that is that little stick standing up beside the GPU brace with the blue light at the bottom. Right there, that thing. Um, because without that thing, the, the thing wasn't turning on. The monitor wasn't turning on, there was nothing displaying on it. So I'm like, I wonder if I need the daughter board for it. So I grabbed that, plugged it in and um, tried to like touch screen, turn it on, whatever. T touch, sorry, I'm trying to adjust my phone. Touch. Tried to touch, turn it on. Um, and it worked and I'm like, oh, okay, there we go. It does work. That's all I needed. Um, now it's a bit of an issue because, because the stupid thing, it, it doesn't react necessarily just to touch alone. Um, depending on certain areas it touches within the case or it goes to in the case, uh, that also affects it. And, um, so it can sometimes turn off if I'm, if I'm like moving it around or something like that in there. So that's kind of annoying. And also the menu at one point just popped up and wouldn't stop popping up. So that was really stupid also. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> My God, it was just whatever. Um, but it works. It's in there. I don't know. Maybe there's another way I can do it. Just provide power to the freaking thing with a, with a different sort of daughter board or something that I could plug into it. Possibly, most likely I can probably do something like that. I just don't really know how or what I'm what exactly I'm doing. And also this this PCI card, uh, the riser, it does not go like attach to the bottom and it doesn't even reach the bottom. So that's also a slight bit of an issue with that thing. And I need to like probably secure that to the bottom uh, of the case there, because I don't really know how exactly to do that. So if anyone has any ideas, let me know. My idea was just to like put it put it 
thick enough piece of plastic in there, kind of wedge it underneath just to just to hold it in place. But yeah, so this building this was extremely exciting for me. Very, very fun. It took a very long time and I know like no, no videos or whatever in the meantime as well. So I apologize for that. Um, that laptop was having a lot of issues with the graphics card the last time I streamed. That's why I haven't in so long. It's because the last time I streamed, it was having horrible, horrible um, lag issues. And I don't know why that is. It seems still really fucked. Like I'm going to, I'm going to have to open that up at some point and uh, see if I can figure out what I can do about the, the GPU in that laptop. Uh, which I have no clue what the hell I'm doing and it's all very much a mess in there because you have to like remove so many things just so that you can even see where the GPU is and then potentially I don't know if it's just like not seated properly or what I have no clue so I'm not very confident in figuring that out right now but um in the meantime it still works it's just the graphics card and it is half useless basically. But yeah, like I said, building this has been so much fun, waiting for all, all the um, extra parts and, and crap to, to slap inside the thing has been a long wait and a long, a, a, a kind of annoying, but also really fun. Every time I got whatever new, I'm like, oh, I need to put that in there. And I would stay up until like 2 a.m., <laughs> 3 a.m., fiddling with it and whatever. When I originally built the computer that night, uh, I, I, I did, like I said, take a break in, in between. So it, I think I went for like, it, it was from about two ish two two or three ish until something like six or 7 PM. And I came back at like 11 o'clock and finally finished and, and got the thing plugged in and working, uh, at 2 AM. And, uh, what I did for, for the installation, the, this, this is actually the, I still hate windows 11, by the way, it's still a piece of giant fucking trash shit. I mean, but I, I just cloned the laptop hard drive to another NVMe and then I just toss it in this thing and I was fully expecting to have to like reinstall windows or give it the the um, key again or whatever but it didn't complain about anything like that it just turned on and, and worked and everything I'm like yay so I really didn't want to have to reinstall all my programs and the preferences and everything for all those and, and, and all that crap I just really didn't want to do, deal with that so hence why I did it this way despite me complaining about Windows 11. Thing is, Windows 10 is coming to end of life. <laughs> the last version of Windows is coming to end of life next year, October anyway. So it's like, I would just be delaying the inevitable for one more fucking year. Um, and right now it's, it's uh, whatever, I don't care. It would have just been another issue with, with Windows 7. Then I'd be on Windows 10 and everyone would be like, I'm hey, gonna go Windows 11. And all the programs and everything would complain about it as well. <sighs> Oh, I should probably mention because people probably either noticed or will ask about it. So the, this case from Corsair, the, the instructions basically tell you very strangely to have one input fan, sorry, one intake fan on the back here. Like no, no joke. The diagram shows air coming in this way and expelling up there, out there, out there, even, even down there. And obviously that's real trash. <laughs> the back is supposed to be the friggin' exhaust. Like what, what What the hell are you talking about? The, these, this has a mesh dust filter. This has a mesh dust filter. The other on the other side has a mesh dust filter. You don't push air from inside the case out through the mesh dust filter. That's ridiculous. You pull air in through those to prevent the dust from getting into your system. You don't want to pull the dust into the system and then prevent it from leaving, Corsair. Come on now. The uh, common idea for airflow with fans is you have intake through the bottom and through the front potentially sides as well, whatever. And then exhaust is supposed to be out the top and out the back. Well, again, this has a mesh dust filter, right? So I did change my mind and turn these fans around so that they pull air in. So the only exhaust is out there. That's kind of partially what the three extra fans up at the top are there for. This is just help, I don't know, I guess direct the air out. And it seems to be fine. I know it may not necessarily be optimal, but it is, I guess, optimal based on the case. So, potentially, just because of the mesh dust filter on top. Regardless, there hasn't been any throttling. Uh, it seems to work and it seems to be fine. So I guess that's it. If you stuck around this long, thank you. I hope you enjoyed me talking about my computer and about how obsessed I became about mods and upgrades and, and, and shoving everything into the computer. Like the title says, <laughs> 
<laughs> Man builds first computer. <laughs> the universe doesn't want me to say it. <laughs> God. Man builds first computer and gets obsessed with upgrades and mods. No joke. I have literally been obsessed about it. But like I said, so much fun. Let me know what you think of my build, my setup, and whatever. I expect many, many negative <laughs> reactions to this thing, especially if this is the first video of mine that you're seeing. And hi and welcome, by the way. And if you have any questions about it as well, let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them. Regardless, this is my first time building a PC. I've wanted to for, for many, many years now, and now I guess was the right time. And uh, if you've been waiting to build your own PC, I recommend that you do it. It is seriously so much fun. Just look up some guides, and if you are really struggling or really worried ab about it, then that is fine. Maybe see if there's someone who can help you. But I seriously recommend doing it. Or if you have some old old PC lying around or something like that, so start with maybe doing some upgrades in, in that thing to kind of get a feel for it and, and get comfortable uh, with it and whatnot. And maybe if you are really worried about screwing something up, go with a super cheap build just to, to kind of try it out and, and test it. And then this way, if something does get messed up, then you're not putting yourself out a crap ton of money, right? But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you again soon. Bye, God bless. Keep calm, drag on.